I'm Reed here down here in southwest Detroit and I was lucky enough to have this lady come up to me and evidently she knows Tracy, right? I know Tracy. Okay, could you get I this? know Dylan that you just talked to too and I know Raz. Oh, okay. I know everybody. Oh, good. I, I, I don't, and your name? Jana. Jana, I wonder why I haven't run into you before. I haven't been out here long. Oh, you haven't? No. How long? Since March. Oh, okay. Now, Jana, you know I take these videos and I upload them to YouTube. Mm -hmm. You okay with that? Yes. So, how old are you? I turned 29 on Valentine's Day. Okay. And uh, where are you from? I'm from Taylor. Okay. And how long have you been down here? Coming down here or just living? Both. Um, I started using heroin. 2014. I've been coming down here since 2015. How uh, I've been living down here completely homeless since March. Oh, okay. Yeah. And how did you get introduced to heroin? Uh, um, okay. I'm going to do it really quick. Yep. My daughter, uh, she's 12. She lives with my mom. My mom's a school teacher. Uh -huh. Um, I went to school with her dad. That's where I met her dad. And it was one of her dad's best friends, Mark Irwin. Um, Dallas is my daughter's father. They were best friends. Dallas overdosed and died. And after he was dead, Mark got out of prison. I started dating Mark. He literally brought it into my home, into my bedroom. I snorted it the first time I didn't get high. The second time I got high was right at that McDonald's. The last thing I remember is a little Mexican boy eating a cheeseburger. I snorted a pack off of a $5 bill with a rolled up hundred. And it was the most intense feeling. And I felt like, because he was an addict and I knew nothing about the addiction, I just wanted him to want to be around me. And I felt like, okay, you know, now we have this in common. So, I never thought he was cheating on me. It was really just the heroin okay. trying to hide that from me. And it was like we had something in common. Yep, okay. So, relationships with heroin, it, it's just much more intense. Okay. And I was snorting it. Okay, I was with him. I was, I was using every day for a month with this guy, Mark. And uh, I told you, he just got out November 8th. He was locked back up by December 16th, sentenced to 7 to 21 years to prison for home invasion and left me with a heroin addiction. I didn't know what to do, where to get it. And I basically had to learn on my own. Okay. It, I didn't get this bad until now. I never walked the ab until this year. Okay. So your drug of choice is heroin, anything else? My drug of choice is Xanax primarily, but now I use heroin, heroin and crack. Heroin and crack, okay. And what would you say your habit is a day? A lot. Dollar wise, really? A lot. Like just guess, throw something out there. Oh boy. Just for me, because everything yeah, just for you. I get me and my boy. Just. At least a hundred dollars. Oh, at least a hundred dollars. Okay. So you've actually been actively working out here for then, totally, how long? Including not living here, but coming down here. Oh, I never started okay. working down here okay. until okay. I. Gotcha. We came down here to cop one day. Yeah. And our phone just happened to take a shit that day too. Okay. And we never left. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. And what type <laughs> normal jobs have you had in the past? That's the thing. Never. Like I've never had. I worked at the strip club. I love to cook. Like that's I tell. Like um, I worked at McDonald's. Uh -huh. I worked at the Landing Strip, which is a strip club. As a shot girl, I never stripped. Um, Carl's Pizza, pizza places. Okay. I lived in Lexington, Kentucky for two years. Uh, Neapolitan and Peru. I had my. That's my something. I try to think. Like, what am I so passionate about? Yeah. I love cooking. I'm self-taught okay. cooking. Right. I'm passionate about cooking. I'm passionate about painting, music, getting to know people. Like, I'm so sad because I feel 
I feel like a lot of people out here are just not, I feel like I'm still a human being. I have so much emotions and feelings and I feel like people walk around here so numb and it hurts me. I want to save everybody. I can't save myself. Like nobody, if they don't live this life, they don't understand how hard this shit is. But and no matter how hard it is, you have to pretend like you're okay. Yeah, right. And just keep going. It's just so hard. Oh, I know. And like everything you care about and all your hopes and dreams and goals and your family and your children, you have to not think about that. Right. Or how else could you get through a day? Right. Like when you're out here fucking hopping in the cars with people you don't know, you could never get out of. I mean, girls are dying left and right, getting beaten, and killed, and like, I miss, I write, I like to write. I keep saying I want to write a book about all the characters on Michigan Ave. Like, I love the people out here, like the homeless people, like they're some of the best people I've ever met. Yeah. Yep. They're like good people with good hearts and everybody, some people are nice, but a lot of people, you know, they just don't understand the judge, like the addiction and they judge and I've been bullied my entire life. That's another thing. I've been bulimic since I was 14. I struggled with the eating disorder, PTSD. I was uh, abducted, raped. It was like a 16 hour ordeal, said if I didn't do what he wanted that he would find my mother and daughter, rape them and kill them. It, after it was over, he called the same people that dropped us off at a bando that he dragged me into. They came and picked us up. And he dropped me off at my house. I had no idea how he knew where my house was. He paid my friend in drugs. Gotcha. To get me. Yep. That was the first thing that broke me. Okay. I couldn't tell you if it was November or February. I know it was cold, there was snow on the ground. That's it. And then after that, well, my daughter's father died, overdose and died. He died in Florida. They didn't find him for three days. He was naked, covered in ice packs on an air mattress. Someone was there with him and just left him. His face was so decayed because it was in a pillow. They had to cremate him. I flew on an airplane to Florida for the first time. Like, I used to be such a good person, and here I am. And I don't want this. Hey, it's not over yet. I mean, you, I don't there's hope. I want this. Well, hang in there. I mean, it's not over. You're young, you got a lot of years left. It's just my heart I was my best friend. He overdosed and died. <sighs> They found him two days after Thanksgiving laying on the bathroom floor. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Everybody I love dies. Or everybody I love is alive. I feel like they just don't yeah. care. Well, you, you have any questions for me? <sighs> Like uh, to where what is, what is it Michigan Mitten Mission? Like where you uh, yeah, I could check apply it out for you. to be sure. homeless? Do you guys have a phone number? Well, I do have a I'll phone check it out. number. You give me your phone number when we're done, and I'll yeah, check it all out for you. Yeah, I have a phone number. Okay. I but someone stole my purse. I have an okay. ID. Okay. I'll do it. I want my GED. I've never gotten my GED. Okay. I want to cook. That's what, I love to cook. I my I want a food truck. I okay. want to be a massage therapist. Okay. And I eventually, when I'm clean, I want to be not only a substance abuse counselor, but I want to work with children. Because I feel that it's mandatory, you know, they used to have D.A.R.E. and great programs. Yeah. It's mandatory for these children to know. If it's mandatory for them to learn about sex ed, they yeah. should, you know, learn, know yeah. about drugs. Because yeah. my mom kept me sheltered. She was a single parent. Yeah. And like, I rebelled. It, like, and I love my mom. And I didn't talk to her for a month. And she actually went to my boyfriend's house, like where his grandma lives, drove all the way up to Belleville looking for me. And she's never 
that just showed me how much she cares about me and like it from my my heart's broken. Okay, well you give me your contact information and I'm gonna take off today, but I'll be back and I'll uh I'll help you on that. Okay. What? I need like I write. I love to write. That's my escape. I need and I lost my notebook. I need a notebook. Okay. And pen. Alright, we'll get you that. Yeah. We'll get you Anything that. to write or like color, draw. Yeah, alright. Something to take my mind off. Oh well, I'll do it. Well thank you for the interview. And I'll see you again. You hang in there. I'll get your stuff. I'm gonna try and help and you out. And I really need a pair of shoes. What size? Um, I'd say nine and a half, ten. Okay, nine like and a half. Like shoes okay. that are not. Right. Oh, and I don't own a pair of underwear. Okay, you want some underwear too? I need underwear. Okay. I hate to like, ask you, but what size? Tiny, like okay. medium okay. or. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm like a cross yeah, you, know, you know, like at Walmart, yeah. how they sell the single cute pairs, yeah. like like small. All right, all right. People will send you that. So good, no. good talking to you. Thank you. Wait, do you need like an address? Yeah, I'm gonna get that from you, and I, yeah, I just don't want to get it on here, you know. Okay. A lot of weirdos out there. All right, well, well, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. And you know, I. I pray for everybody out here. My one thing, I love saying to people, I say to him, I'm like, I, I, I mingle with the locals. I've never been homeless, but these are some of the people with the biggest hearts I've ever met. Well, I know, you got And I just, you know, I love saying, hey, good night, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yep. And we, I see him tomorrow. I know. I'm not cut out for this. No, you're not, you're not. Well, you hang in there, okay? Thank you. All right, now I'll get your stuff and we'll get working on it. Thank you. Thank you.